Okay, welcome back to some more videos on domain and range. Here we're talking about when functions are defined and not. In these questions, what it's basically asking you to do is sketch this graph and hence determine the domain and range from it. Now from this, okay, we know that the square root of a negative number does not exist. Okay, square root of a negative number, DNE means does not exist. So if we have the square root of x take 2, x take 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0 for all values of x. What this means is that x has to be greater than or equal to 2 for all values of x. All right. Otherwise, it's undefined. If we were to put 1 into this equation, if we put x equals 1, we're going to get y equals the square root of 1 take 2, which is the square root of minus 1. This is undefined. Okay, There is no solution to this. So the function is undefined at that point. Now we look at my calculator over here. When I input the function, the square root of x take 2, and we graph it, okay, we can see this curve here sloping away from the x-axis. And of course, that point on the x-axis is x equals 2, okay? Because to the left of that, the function does not exist. To the right, it exists infinitely. So for our domain, for this function, Okay, we have x where x is greater than or equal to 2. All right, just like we wrote here. Here we're talking about when does the function exist. That's what the domain is. It's the definition of when the function exists. For range, range for this one is a little bit tricky, okay, because our calculator actually hasn't given us a representation of uh, what this function actually is. The limitation is that this gives us a function, okay? It doesn't graph the relation. Really, the relationship looks like this, okay? Here's minus two, and it goes at that point, all right? Remember, this is the function. So if we were to put in, oh, well, what's the, uh, what happens if we put x equals six in there? Okay, if you put x equals six into this equation, you have the square root of six take two. Six take two is four, so you have the square root of four. The square root of four is actually plus two and minus two. So there's actually supposed to be two answers. So it actually should look like this, all right? The restriction is on the domain, okay? The domain, x has to be greater than two. For the range, the range can actually be any value of y. Y, where y belongs to the set of all real numbers, okay? And that's what the answers will have written in the back of the book for you. For the function x squared take four, all right, we're not gonna try and do this one algebraically, we're just gonna go ahead and graph it, okay? So we have x squared, uh, now sorry, it's a square root of x squared take four. Okay, I'll just change my V window here to standard all right, that can often help us see them nicely. And what we have here is a function going in like that, okay? So if I'm gonna trace along it, when x is zero, we can see there's an error. And I'll show you about that in a moment algebraically. I'll just keep going along. We've still got y is an error. And all of a sudden when I get to 2.063, y is defined, okay? Let's show you why. If we have x squared take 4, okay, if we put x is 1 into this equation, okay, what do we have? We have the square root of 1 squared take 4, that is 1 take 4, which would be the square root of minus 3, does not exist. If we put x is 1.5 into the equation, it doesn't exist there as well, okay? It has to exist when this is greater than 0. So we can see it exists when x where x is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to negative 2, all right? Okay, so it exists on those two regions. Now we can't write plus or minus 2 because the inequalities are facing in different directions. Okay, so that's the domain. What about the range? Okay, again, we have the same uh, problem that we saw previously. Uh, the, this, this is what the function looks like, but what should the relation look like, okay? And it is 
like this. Okay, it's just because it doesn't recognize that one x value can have two values of y. Okay, so for this one, we have the range y where y belongs to the set of all real numbers. Fantastic. Lastly, the function one on x squared. Okay, now obviously this function does not exist when x equals zero. x cannot equal zero. The function is going to be undefined. Let's draw a graph of it. Okay, now whenever the function is undefined, that means there's going to be an asymptote at that point. Okay, so here's a graph of one on x squared, and we can see it being asymptotic to the y-axis. All right, so basically what we have is it exists and here we've got, let's draw a graph of what this function looks like. Okay, it's like this, arrows here, arrows here, arrows here, arrows here. Okay, so we have every value of x except when x is zero. So the domain of this function is x where x does not equal zero. X can be any value but zero. The range is different, okay? The range cannot be negative because as soon as we put a, val a negative value of x in, it becomes positive. So all values of y are greater than zero. So we have y where y is greater than zero. All right, it's at the, so it's asymptotic to the x-axis and the y-axis. There's our domain, there's our range. So for these questions, don't stress about them. All you have to do is graph it, use your trace, okay? If there's an error like we just saw there, all right, that means the function doesn't exist at that point. That's fine, okay? That means there's an asymptote there, and then we can see as x increases, y is decreasing, same back the other way. All right? So we're just talking about what are the confines of these functions? When and when does it not exist?